All right, today we're going to talk about all the equipment and tools that a potter needs to get started doing pottery as a beginner. If you're already an intermediate or an advanced potter, you can skip this one. Or you can still watch, pick up some tips or tricks of some tools that you could use, hacks that you can do, or just watch the demo that I'm going to do using the tools that I recommend. The tools that you need are really basic, so it'll only take me a couple of minutes to go over them all. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is a pottery wheel. And this is probably about the most basic model of wheel that I would ever buy. The reason I bought this is because it's inexpensive and it's portable. But it's also good quality. When you start to spend more money than the portable wheels, you'll get heavier wheels that also can center more. They're more powerful and they'll probably last longer. And when I say last longer, I'm talking decades if you treat them right probably longer i had a brent cxc is which is a professional quality wheel that i used forever and then i had to downsize and i went up selling it but it was in as good a condition when i sold it as when i bought it used from someone else who was a teacher and had been using it like crazy so these things if treated properly will last forever but you have to make that investment in the wheel the next thing you need is clay. And the trickiest part about clay is that it has to be the right firing temperature to suit what you're doing. This clay that I'm using is a cone 5 clay, which is a mid-fire clay, mid-range temperature, right? When you talk about cones, you're talking about the amount of heat that you have to apply to the clay to get it to solidify, to vitrify and turn hard. So this is a cone 5, which is a mid-fire. If you're doing high fire, then you'd go up to maybe cone 8, 9, or 10. If you're doing low fire, then the low end of the spectrum starts with a 0 first, so it would be cone 05. And you can look up a lot of videos on all the cone numbers and temperatures of firing clay. But the most important thing to know is where you're firing the clay. If you're firing at a studio, like I do, which is the studio where I also teach, then you need to make sure that the clay fits the glazes and the kiln temperatures that they are firing at. My studio fires almost everything at cone 5, so it's just a no-brainer. Their glazes are all mixed to a cone 5. The clays that they purchase, that we purchase from them as students and instructors and potters, are cone 5, and it's all the same. And that's how it needs to be. If you're at a studio where they do low fire, then you'll want to make sure you're getting clay that's compatible with them. And that's the easiest way is just to ask. If you're firing on your own, then you can make the decision to fire low fire, medium fire, high fire, and then you just want to make sure that your clay is compatible to the temperature that you're firing. Okay, so that's the basics on clay. But besides that, you want a clay as a beginner that has very low grog, which means less sand. It's not for like hand building or sculptural building it's made for throwing on the wheel that'll generally be a smoother clay that as a beginner you'll appreciate because you won't wear down your hands it's also just easier to center and all that so that's your clay the next thing is some just real basics things that need to be sitting around you need a bucket and in fact, you need a bunch of buckets. And I recommend having a couple of smaller buckets like this for water. But you also need a little Tupperware for throwing some slip in. So you can save your slip and always have it on hand when you're attaching handles. And then you need a big, like Home Depot paint bucket, right? And that's where you're going to dump your clay and let it settle out of the water so that you're not pouring that down your sink and ruining your sink. That's a big one. Here, let me wrap my clay back up, because it's getting windy. I don't want it to dry out. And then we can talk about some other things. You need some towels. I just keep reusing this towel. I just keep washing it out, wringing it out in my clay capture bucket, so I'm not rinsing it down the sink. But you need a clean, dry towel, or two or three. A cleanup sponge. This big guy is a highly recommended item. These are cheap. These are used for drywall or painters. 
but these just make it so easy to clean up large swaths, big areas, right? You're going to need a table. And I built this tiny little thing to work out here. And it was a little unstable at first, so I even had to add some 2x4 angle braces that went against the ground so it was more stable, right? And ideally, you'll have a work surface. This is not a work surface that's ready, but you can take a thin board or that has a smooth surface that you can wedge on or just work on to do handles and things. Or ideally, you'll take a piece of canvas and stretch it over a board like this in my indoor studio. And you can see some wear boards here, but you can see how the canvas is stretched over the entire tabletop and that's stapled underneath. And what that does is it allows you to work on that surface with your clay without it sticking or picking up chunks of wood or all of the problems that generally arise from using clay on a surface. So now the biggest piece of equipment that people do struggle with is the kiln itself. And if you're a beginning potter, I recommend finding a studio where they will fire your pots for you. Make them at home, dry them at home, and then bring them in to be fired. It's a great way to be able to get started throwing and making sure that you love pottery before you commit to rewiring your home for a kiln and finding a suitable safe place for your kiln with ventilation and everything and then buying the kiln for thousands of dollars. But that means all you really need in your studio is that table with the canvas surface and some shelves to store your ware until you bring them into the studio to get fired. So. Finally, let's talk about just some basic hand tools that you need. And most of the tools that you will need can be bought in one of those basic packs. That includes a wooden knife, a wooden rib, a metal rib, a cutting wire, a sponge, and a needle. Oh, and two clay trimming tools, which you saw on the table in the studio. And a couple of other things that I like to have on hand, if you're into like decorating or carving, are one of these, you know, a sharp X-Acto, or you can get the kind that just has the blade that sticks into the end, just for cutting and decorating leather hard stuff, and a ballpoint pen. And this you use to just sign the bottoms of your pots. You can also use this part or the tip of this guy, but a ballpoint pen is the smoothest, easiest way to do that with the least amount of mess. I don't recommend using the tip of the needle because it's too sharp and it makes more of a mess. If you're going to buy extra things, one thing I might recommend is some nicer sponges. Here's a nice one that comes in a set of three. There's a blue one, an orange one, and this white one. These are from Mud Tools. And this white one is really smooth. It's almost like a chamois. And a chamois is just like a little piece of fabric that's really smooth that's great for rounding off your edges on your pots, making them really smooth. And you want to be able to do that. That's a good one. Another thing you might buy is a couple of extra wires. The wires, they get worn out. And if you take good care of them, this wire will last forever. But if you're not the only one in your studio, or you're being rough with it, or you're getting it rolled up like this and then pulling it like that, you'll create kinks in it. And the minute you get one of those kinks, when you go to cut your pot off the wheel, that kink will cause you problems. You'll also get it frayed and the wire will actually stab you and it hurts like hell. So don't do that. Just take good care of your wire. That's why you'll always notice I have it draped out like this, right? I'm never like mashing it in somewhere, right? I'm keeping it draped out so it's always straight. But these are cheap too. So you can buy five of these and then you'll always be set. And you use wire so much for so many things. It's a really critical piece. With that being said, I think we should dive in and do a quick little demo of how to use some of these really basic tools, and you've seen me do it before, so this shouldn't be too new to many of you. But if you are new to the channel today, then this will be really helpful, I think. 
first thing you're obviously going to do oh did i mention plastic bags i have like a thousand plastic bags in the pocket of this vest because this is my grubby pottery throwing vest that's the other thing you need some grubby clothes an apron or even if it's just a t-shirt to go over the top is great some people drape a blanket or i even have not a blanket if you're cold you can do a blanket i should have one today you can do a uh oh my gosh what's the word for it a big bath towel an old bath towel over your legs to keep them keep your pants from getting all messy so i have a lot of plastic bags or even um what's ideal is dry cleaner bags those big long clear plastic bags because those are really good for covering and wrapping your pots and still being able to see inside to see what you've got but they're also bigger so if you once you start doing bigger things a little grocery bag is a little trickier so the first thing we're going to do for our demonstration is practice with the wire right of course this so i'm just going to make a mug so i'm just going to cut this into a, an amount of clay that's suitable for a mug that's too big really i'm going to try and make a, a, a very delicate awesome mug so slap that together so we don't get air bubbles always keep the rest of your clay wrapped in plastic so it doesn't dry out this has already been well wedged speaking of quality clay clay that comes right out of the bag from the manufacturer is great to use straight but you can also wedge it and any clay that's being recycled or reclaimed which you will do a lot because you'll make mistakes you want to wedge on that canvas table that's the beauty of that canvas and if you don't have a whole table that you can wrap you can take a board about this big wrap it with canvas staple it to the bottom and then just use that set it on a tabletop somewhere and wedge on that the canvas is a beautiful thing i could do without all of these tools and all i really would need is a wheel that work and some water <laughs> and that's really what's beautiful about pottery the rest of this stuff is all just bonus right it's all just bonus so remember that if you're stressed out you're like oh i can't afford a kiln i can't afford this i can't afford that don't worry about it you need a wheel and this is a great example i mean this wheel is not cheap but it's an investment and once you have the wheel and some clay you can make pottery and you'd be amazed at what you can do with just those just your hands So we're going to do some wedging, not wedging, coning. Get it nice and centered. Open up the form. I'm going to go very, fairly thin on the bottom. I'm not going to try and get too excessive or anything with thinness, but... And compression is your friend so we're speaking of how to use tools let's start with one little tip you can use this wooden rib to compress i don't with, with uh, mugs because they're small enough that it's not convenient but you can press this guy into the bottom this is really good for plates and bowls and larger things makes your pot stronger this is also good for shaping or scraping off clay off the side of your wheel, off the side of your bat. So there's your first little tool tip. Second one, of course, is the sponge. Sponges are great for not only for cleanup, right? Managing your mess, wiping your hands off. I do I wash my hands a lot with the sponge, right? But also for controlling your water. And if you load up your sponge so it's soaking wet, like this. So it's almost dripping and you squeeze it like that you can look how i can control that water almost perfectly and i can just do a little boop, oops missed right onto the rim of the pot and now i have the the moisture on that surface to be able to throw and when that dries up and you can see it drying up there i can do that again and just do a little bit and then i can continue throwing and you might have to do that a couple times, and that's okay. The other thing you do habitually as you become more proficient at pottery is drying out the inside, pulling the excess water out of the bottom of your pot, 
to keep it from cracking. Keeping that clay strong down there. You can also use your sponge for throwing, and I've done that for years in a lot of my videos you'll see me use sponges, but I've sort of stopped doing that, but I'll show you anyway. Here, first of all, little, little drizzle down the inside so my fingers aren't sticking. Now you can empty the water out of the sponge and use it to press through, and it breaks the friction. You don't need as much water when you use a sponge. So there are some really nice things about using the sponge. It also makes a really smooth surface if that's what you're going for. And then I use the sponge often to compress the rim. Compressing is I'm supporting the rim and then I'm just pressing the sponge down kind of between my fingers to, to, to consolidate that clay and strengthen that rim. Because the rims are always this thing that break, right? They need every little bit of help they can get. Okay, now that's also where this guy comes in. I like to use this sponge on the rim more because it's smoother and it leaves a nicer surface. And I'll use that for finishing. I also like to use a little strip of plastic bag to, to go over that and it polishes the rim. Similar to a chamois but even more so than a chamois. I'll show you that in another video though. Um, okay, so... Talking tools, well, your needle tool, if I want to check the depth of my pot, I stick the needle tool into the bottom of the pot. You can't see this, but I slide my finger, and it shows me how thick the bottom is. Okay. The needle tool is great for a lot of things, like if I wanted to just etch a line in here for whatever reason. Bam. You want to cut the rim off, you cut it with the needle, although I personally prefer the wire because it cuts cleaner and it's sharper, so you just snip a little off okay a little more pulling up here you can also drizzle with your fingers and that's what I'm saying I control the water like this right just drizzling and you know you'll also if you see some of my old videos you'll notice I use a kitchen sponge I have a pink rectangular kitchen sponge it's the cheapest sponge you could probably find from like the dollar store Probably get 10 of them for a dollar. And you know what? It worked just fine. In fact, in some ways I liked it better because it's so big. So you can spend a fortune on fancy sea sponges or synthetic sea sponges or all kinds of things. And it all is helpful, but it's also not necessary to be a potter. And that's the beauty of it. Okay. So let's talk about a final couple of tools here. Is that a mug yet? Well, almost. One more. One more pull up here. Put some some little spirals into it. There we go. I'll use this guy to soak up the water. I'll use this guy to wrap it around the rim. I'm going to flare this rim out just a tiny bit. And then maybe take some of the slip off of it, get it to dry faster. Beautiful. Now you could either so if I didn't have these nice hand ridges, I could go in and use this to scrape it clean. That's where this guy comes in too. You can shape and scrape to clean that off. Take all the slip off and all the throwing lines if you wanted to carve into this later. Or just for whatever reason. And then the final move is this guy. So, this is your traditional pointed knife edge and then usually there's a rounded edge on here i've created i've etched into this to make it a little uh, tool to create a, a foot down here but you can either carve away the excess with this tool like that and then scrape it away like that or if you have the rounded edge you can scrape away with the rounded edge or, since I've carved into this, so this is the one customization I'm really going to show you, you can use this to create a little foot like this.
I actually need to go down a little steeper right there. I don't know what I just what did I just do? I just got weird. It's my pop. There we go. Now we can go in, go slower. That just creates a fancy little foot. Now you can use a finger or a sponge to smooth that up. Sometimes I'll do this upside down like this to get the shape that I want. I kind of like that one better. Back to your sponge for smoothing. Use this guy to scrape any excess away from the bottom. And that pot is finished. So now you Slow your wheel quite a bit, take your wire, hold your, oops, a little faster maybe, hold your wire very tight and pull slowly and steadily through the bottom. Oh, there we go, it's free. And your pot is finished. So thanks for coming and watching today. This has been a summary of all the tools and equipment you need to get started as a beginner doing pottery. And like I said, it's not as much as you would think. Most of them are still optional. This little $15 packet of tools is really all you need to get started with a wheel, a bag of clay, and you're good to go. So I have some links to the little toolkit and those mud tool sponges and these big cleaning sponges in the description if you need to find those. I recommend buying clay from as close to you as possible so that you're not only using locally sourced clay, but you're not shipping it as far for so many reasons, right? And I wish you the best in making your pottery, and I will see you tomorrow to make more pottery. Pottery attack! Snow attack! Snow attack! Snow attack. matter. Can I just take a minute to talk about how beautiful it is right now? I don't know if you can see all the snow and the sunshine, but it is making me so freaking happy. There have been some rough days through this pandemic, but it's days like this that make it all worth it. So glad to be here and be out here doing pottery in the sun. So glad to have my faithful companion Roger too. Where are you, Roger? Can you see him? Roger! Hey! Hey, Roger! Roger! Oh, he's got a bone. No distracting him now. <laughs>